Welcome to News 6. Today's News 6 comes to you from the class of Mrs. Sharon Schutt at Gibsonburg Elementary. One of the most looked for additions to our town is the White Star Recreation Center, which will provide a swimming lake and sports facilities for the people of Gibsonburg. Classmates Sandra Sanchez and Ann Stevenson talked to White Star Ranger Dana Reed about the new park. What are some of the facilities they have now and what are proposed? There's very little on the property right at this time. When we first got the property, there were, were an awful lot of large steel buildings and a lot of scrap metal laying around. And we spent much of the first year or so just getting rid of all the old scrap metal that was laying around. We also had a lot of brush to clear and so forth to get the park ready. And, and all that took an awful lot of time. When the park's finished, the main attraction will be the large 15-acre lake located in the middle of the property. There'll be a large swimming area with lifeguards and dressing rooms so that people can change their suits out there. There'll be large picnic areas, picnic shelters. There'll be a scuba diving clubhouse. We need to put in roads and parking lots yet. The restroom facilities are about done. We have to put in a softball area. And as well as in the south end, we have a very extensive system of nature trails, several kilometers of nature trails, as well as a day camp area that's used by the YMCA. Mr. Reed said he hopes the White Star Recreation Center will be finished by next summer. This summer, Gibsonburg's only public swimming faculty was closed because it didn't have enough safety equipment. The mayor, village, the mayor and the village council immediately ordered the equipment to meet the requirement safety standards. However, due to the late arrival of the equipment and the lateness of swimming season, the quarry was never reopened. The, it is hoped more lifeguards will be hired next year and the quarry will reopen to give the people of Gibsonburg a place to relax and keep cool in the summer of 1978. Through the talent of classmate Debbie Blasey's father and the benefit of the summer sun, one local swimming pool is kept at 84 degrees all summer long. Debbie and her family built and now own Gibsonburg's only heated swimming pool. Mr. Blasey made the pipes and bought the other equipment needed to build the solar heater. The sun beats down on a plexiglass roof of a box containing the circulating water from the roof. Pool. The cost of putting together the solar heater was $500. Of course, on a cloudy day, the pool gets cooler. But who wants to swim then, anyway? Our class discovered an unusual object in nature when, Jennifer, when classmate Jennifer Schroeder brought in a special bird's nest. One of Jennifer's sisters had gotten her hair cut in their backyard. The hair was long and blonde and apparently soft. The resident sparrow used it to form a nest. The nest was also made up of twigs and dry grasses. The class decided, decided that that would remind them of spun cotton candy. Classmate Albert Anderko became a local celebrity while vacationing in Baltimore, Maryland last summer. Albert actually caught a shark with his bare hands. The shark was just 18 inches long, but Albert got his picture in the paper and received a special commendation from the House of Representatives in Pennsylvania. Now his prize is stuffed and Albert keeps it in a memento of his daring deed. One of the most active people in our school is teacher Mervyn Hall, who is not only teacher but keeps busy with three special hobbies. One of the most expensive hobbies is making jewelry. Mr. Hall uses silver, gold, ivory, and gemstones to make rings, necklaces, and belt buckles. These designs are entirely original and include necklaces, piece, necklace pieces as big as a baseball. Other creative hobbies of Mr. Hall's is weaving. He usually makes large wall hangings or baskets. Mr. Hall also has constructed a greenhouse behind his home in which this is a collection of flowers. Mr. Hall has over 900 orchids 
and has won a number of prizes for them. <clears throat> Our class has been studying the making of candles throughout the ages and decided it would be more interesting to experience this rather than just read about it. We followed early American tradition by dipping wicks into melted wax with coloring. Our ancestors used metal for their candle molds, but we used the modern plastic molds to form the shapes instead of taper candles. To bring our study to modern candle making, one of our classmates brought in novelty candles from her father's business. The most interesting candles were those shaped like hamburgers, teddy bears, hot dogs, and Pepsi bottles. One of our sixth graders is already in a success in her chosen field. Amy Holcomb is a baton twirl, twirler and she started taking lessons when she was five. She still takes lessons now and has 109 trophies and 50 medals so to prove that she learns well. Amy is with us today to give a demonstration of her grand champion form. Thank you for joining us today on News 6, brought to you by the class of Mrs. Sharon Schutt at Gibsonburg Elementary. Next week, News 6 will be produced by St. Joseph's School at, in Wapakoneta. Have a nice week. The preceding program is made possible in part by a grant from the Northwest Ohio Educational Television Foundation.